So in this particular video, we're going to talk about toning. Uh, you may also hear the term tone and tag. Uh, if you get sent out to a job, then basically what that means is there could potentially be a line that we may not be able to identify. Typically, we would put labels on such as this, and we would put what the location is, and it should match on the IDF, MDF side of things or the rack side. This part right here is what sends out the signal, and this is called your wand. On this wand, on the side here, there is a volume control that you could turn up and down, and then there's a speaker down here. To enable this, once you have this side hooked up, you just simply hold on to that button. On this side of things, we have some alligator clips, a red and a black. Then we also have what could plug into like one of your wall locations. To turn this particular one on, this is a fluke network. You hold this button here, and when you see that red light come on, that's going to give you a uh, solid tone when I when I hit this button. You know, it'll just be that continuous sound. But if you hit that again you're gonna see that light start flashing. That's gonna give you the ability to have like a, a tone where it kind of fluctuates. So let's hear what this one sounds like. So you can hear how that is different from just a regular tone. With me holding that button and holding it close to there, I could turn that down or I could turn it up. And on here, it'll give you like a sign to turn it down by pulling it down or pushing it up to become louder. If you just have one set volume level, you won't be able to hear it in certain conditions. Um, I would recommend, you know, if you're like in an office area, you kind of keep it down, just want to respect the area. But in places where like you have like a HVAC unit that's in there pumping heat, you're in like a data center type of closet, you should be more than fine to turn that up. You know, for the red, I'll put four wires together. For the black, I'll put four wires together. And once I get all four like that, you see how quick that was just using that. Um, I'm going to twist them together so that way they all are together. You could do one single one, but it's not going to be as loud as if you combine four of them together. If you open these up, this little circle there, that is typically where you want to connect. You have these teeth in here that will, that will allow it to make that contact with there. So typically what I do is I will open it. I'll set it on that circle and then I will push down on that. Some people even will push this in there to keep it from falling. Like if you're going to be at a far distance and you're afraid, like in this case where it's hanging, you don't have something to really tie off to, you can put this on there and that's going to help to keep that um, snug. Do the same thing for the red. The red has the same exact circle there and then the teeth down there. I want to make sure of a couple things. I want to make sure that I have power turned on here. I want to make sure that it's flashing so that way I get that audible tone that fluctuates. So what you can do now is with your wand, you hold the button and you're going to, you're going to hear that. Now, what I also would do is to make sure that the sound is coming through here and get into this wire. I typically would take this and just make sure that I'm hearing it on the actual line that I want to check on the other side. So up here we have our patch panel and everything's terminated. Let's just imagine that these labels were not here. Wherever it's coming into the rack and you know that it's CAT6, what I would do um, in this situation, um, there's a few things. There's a few things, you know, when I think about Tony that I think about, I think about okay, um, I know that that wire over there is a black wire. So that kind of limits me to this, the black wires that are in here. It's not always going to be the case. It may be 200 white wires. And if there's no label on this side and you can't look at the map to be able to tell what it is, this is when this wand is going to come in hand. So let's imagine that all these cables were the same and I'm trying to find what's what. So again, I have the volume up here. So that way when I hold this button and I get near the cable, I should hear like an audible tone. I will say this, when you get near the wire, you, you may hear it at a distance, but you will know when you have the wire because it'll be, it should be like a strong signal. Now there, it, there can be crosstalk. Um, some of the times when you're in the ceiling, it gets near electric or um, stuff that's connected to the, uh, 
the network. I had a uh, job where I was in a fitness center. They had TVs that were hooked up. I needed to tone out a line. I could actually hear what the TVs were broadcasting. So we want to make sure that we really know what's um, what we're going into and just be able to hear um, what we're looking for. We're looking for a strong audible signal. Now you may touch other wires that may be touching that at a different point and so you might hear it but again I would take the time make sure that you understand that the loudest that you hear is most likely going to be that one. So I'm going to take my wand holding this button and I usually will take like a handful at a time and I would try to separate it so that way once I'm done with that bundle I know that I've already done that. Then I'll go to another set of wires. So for example, I'm going against this, holding the button. You'll hear that, that's, you can hear how you can hear that, but that's not strong enough. And with this part right here, this tip, you could just run it along the, uh, the wire sort of like this, and that will just, you know, help you to see if that is the line. So I did this one, you can hear a little bit, but that could be, again, like in the ceiling, it could be touching that wire and it could be putting a little uh, crosstalk in it. Nothing there, nothing there, nothing there. Now we're going on to these. So you can, you can hear the difference. You can hear that and some people might. I mean, some people might think, okay, this is it because I can hear but you can tell the difference and I, I have the volume all the way up. So this is example one. And then this is actually the cable that it is. So you want that crisp, clear sound. Um, again, it's very easy to confuse wires. And that's why I say to have that volume all the way up in the environments that you can. So that way you can really hear which one is the loudest or which one's not. One of the tricks that I do with toning is if I know that there is one cable that I need to figure out what's what, I will typically put it at the end location. Otherwise, I'm going to be moving that plug or disconnecting 100 lines when all I need to do is find one line. So you kind of work backwards. You work at the end location and then you come back here and that's where you would take this one and you would tap all these to see which one is which. We can then take the time to put the label on it with a Sharpie. Again, it's about to the crease of your uh, arm. Uh, we would want to label that, you know, twice to make sure that, you know, um, everybody's aware of what it is. And then on the front side of this patch panel, again, whatever that label may be, in this case, it's AP1. We wanna make sure that AP1 is labeled there. Um, any kind of changes, um, because there are times where you may go into situations where the cable says something, but on the patch panel side, it's different. We wanna make sure that we tone it out and that we uh, update any kind of drawing or notify the customer of the, the change.